second. The rains are up. It's cold today. Um, but we've got to build another chick, basically the chick shawl or the movable chicken unit for the permaculture chickens that's going in the garden for the winter season and early spring to enhance the area that our corn was in. Uh, if you remember over, let's see if we can show it. Over here, where we've got the cows now, right there, you can see the, the chicken fencing. That will be the ones, of course, that will be in the garden. So we've got to build some kind of uh, chicken house that still can have egg layers, because they are egg layers. They're just some of our older hens, but we need to put them over there, but we need to have a place for them to kind of roost at night and also keep them safe. Um, so we'll kind of close them up. So we're going to build that today. We're going to move the silage tarp a little bit further down on the garden. Uh, me and Missy talked about it last night. We're going to lose the peas just because we should have planted probably three weeks earlier. Um, one good thing is we will uh, not get any peas off of them, but they were extra peas anyway. But what it will do is it will allow us to um, just chop and chop them, them, cover them up with silage tarp. So I'm hoping those peas added some good uh, nitrogen back to the soil. So we've got a lot of stuff to do today. It's cold, me and Aiden bundled up because we're not used to this coldness. So uh, we also got to put the hunting blind up because it is officially uh, cool for deer season. So I'm hoping we can uh, drop some deer this year. So we're going to get that, bring you along for the way. we got it up what we'll to stake it down we like blinds just because they're moving uh, I mean movable we have about three or four spots that we hunt right here around the house and then we have at the other place where our other bees are and our other cows are there's some places there that we hunt too so instead of spending a lot of money on box stands or ladder stands or tripod stands at all those locations it's so easy just to take I have two blinds and I can move them if I know I'm gonna hunt here for the next few days or weeks I can leave it here and then the other one I could have on my back going into the woods or set it up a day or two before. So we're going to see how it goes. We're going to go ahead and get this uh, stick down and then we can actually start on projects that, uh, that need to be done for the day. you see we're moving it over here and you see the quality of this is just old biomass stuff that's grown all up 
excuse me, it's not biomass yet. It's fixing to be biomass. It's just old bedding, straw, compost that has not been covered up. So we're going to cover it because this is what happens. Look at this. This is where this has been. Now we're going to recover this because we're just moving tarps. But look how good quality. I don't know if the camera even does it justice, but look at that. It's just pure, pure brown, wet, loose soil with a bunch of compost and bone mess in it. So this is what we'll do with the peas down there because we're not going to get a harvest off of them. We're going to cover them up and that way they'll get at least, they'll be, you know, good for something. So, but you see how good this looks compared to that over there. So with us doing more of a, I wouldn't say just a no-till, but doing more of a, a non-invasive gardening approach, these silage tarps are awesome. We will link the silage tarps below in our Amazon store. I'm just telling you, they are worth their money and, and y'all will love them if you're utilizing them, especially if you're not tilling a lot and trying to keep all your your compost and all your microbes in the soil like we are, it's going to benefit you. So we're going to finish moving. Aiden is taking the stuff off those tarps. We're going to tie them in, put them over here next to the permaculture chickens, and we'll be ready to rock. All right. Salad tarps are done. Aiden's worn out. The day has just started, though. It's really early, so we're going to try to get some other things done. It is cold, though. We're actually having, like, a cold sweat from moving those silage tarps. It's a lot harder than we thought because it had so much water on it and mud. <laughs> so it's a little bit more than we anticipated. Uh, before we start on the chicken, um, the new chicken tractor uh, that's going to go in the purple culture chicken area, let's go look at the wheat, see how the wheat's coming up, and also where the sheep are going to go, see if the, the ryegrass is looking good there. And uh, we'll let you look at the silage tarps once we're done. So here, here you go. Here's the silage tarps. So we got a perfect square that goes all the way to the permaculture fence for the chickens and all the way to where we actually have got the peas and also the um, mustard and collards. So very pleased with that. We also got some organization done. You know, I can't stand a, uh, just a mess. And we had some stuff from spring and summer gardens laid around so we cleaned up a little of that too so uh, we like cleanliness huh he does So the grass is really growing strong in here. There's still some little holes that we got to fill in, but it's growing really good. And that's after deer season's over, all that hedge right there, we're leaving it there just for camouflage for, uh, you know, the deer so they feel more comfortable going in. There's a plot down there. But uh, after deer season, we'll actually cut all that uh, high grass down, and basically there'll be about five more paddocks going that way just for the sheep. And then they will also rotate behind the cows, but there's times that, you know, in the, in the spring and summer, especially in Mississippi, some of the grass may stagnate, or some, and then August, some of the grass may stagnate. So instead of putting the sheep right behind the cows, sometimes um, they'll be in their own little paddock rotation over here. But other times we'll put them right behind the uh, cows and let them eat what the cows don't eat. Now one good thing about our cows, because, and we'll show you those, they're over here. Um, one good thing about them, the way we've got them grazing so intense, they don't really leave a lot of scrap grass. Um, so it's really a good thing to where if we can't use the sheep behind them, again, that's why we have all this extra paddock room over here and moving this way. And, of course, we can also use, use it for cows if we ever needed it. But all that looks really good. Uh, now let's go actually do the project we meant to do for today, building a chicken coop.
have it mobile. It does move good. Not the biggest wheels. I wish I would have went with bigger wheels. I know that a lot of people say go bigger wheels, but uh, I'm cheap, so I did not do that. But anyways, it is movable. So I'm gonna put some. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start putting some uh, the actual uh, chicken wire down, uh, which I got hard wire mesh. I actually didn't do chicken wire because I wanted something a little bit more durable. So I got some uh, hard wire mesh that will go in there on bottom and on the sides, then tin the top, tin the bot, the back, and uh, make some little nesting boxes. And uh, I think we'll be we'll be good to go. Alright, we are almost done. It is getting colder and colder by the hour. Um, but we've got the whole structure built. Uh, we didn't use a bar up here like the Dustin Roads. We, we just went with wood because we had the spare wood. Um, and then of course we got the hardwire mesh on the bottom. We're fixing to staple it down and then we'll start building the top. We've got all this we cover with mesh. The back will be covered with tin. Uh, so I'm hoping we can get finished with this in the next hour. That's my goal. It took a little bit longer than what I was hoping, but we're almost there. So, AIDS helped me, and uh, it's looking good so far. We know we'll probably have to have a little bit bigger wheels, like most people put the bigger ones on there. But once we get in that spot, I don't think we'll need bigger wheels unless we were rolling it a lot. Our goal is not to roll it too terribly much. <laughs> So you see in here it doesn't get too cold but we're gonna put some hay and put two big boxes in there so we're not completely finished we've got to put some handles on there another little piece of wood there for them to step down in that's just the base um, we wrapped it in an old tin from an old barn from man probably a hundred year old barn um, and we had it here I know it doesn't look like a brand new one it doesn't have no brand new tin on it but hey man it'll do what we want it to do we're gonna roll it on out get it set up and uh, I don't know if we'll move the hens in there today because it's cold and uh, it's getting late but at least we got it done. Aiden was a big helper so what's well, more fun than uh, building this and accomplishing some goal was to be able to spend time with him and to do things together so God bless you hope you enjoyed this video we're wrapping it up and happy homesteading y'all happy homesteading y'all